Welcome to the Knesset. I'm Yuli Edelstein, Speaker of the Knesset. The Knesset is important for every Israeli citizen because the laws passed here and decisions taken affect directly every one of us. The Knesset has been involved in every major event in the history of our state. The film you're about to see will illustrate this well. I invite you to join us in experiencing Israeli democracy. Welcome to the Knesset, Israel's legislature. If its walls could only speak, they would tell the story of Israeli democracy. The essence of the reborn nation was formulated here. In the final analysis, the decisions taken here shape our lives. <laughs> The Knesset didn't always reside here. Before it moved to its present quarters, it occupied a humble building in downtown Jerusalem, Beit Fruman. Only in 1966, after Israel's 18th birthday, was this building on Givat Ram in Jerusalem inaugurated. Since then, all of Israel's leaders have passed through its gates. Since then, there has been no center of activity more dynamic, more tempestuous, or more influential on life in Israel. A place that is open to all citizens and residents, to all communities and sectors. All the prevailing views of Israelis are represented in this chamber, the Plenary Hall. The Knesset is also a stage for world leaders appealing from its podium to the people in Israel. Over the years, American presidents have come here to express their unique Your relationship journey. with Israel. Is our journey. Citizens of Israel, Masada shall never fall again, and America will be at your side. German presidents have stood at the Knesset's podium, apologizing for the crimes of the Nazis. But the most exciting visit of all occurred in November 1977. Anwar Sadat, president of Egypt, then Israel's greatest enemy, came to Jerusalem to extend his hand in peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Sadat's historic visit to the Knesset touched the hearts of Israelis. <laughs> you always call me an old lady, Mr. President. <laughs> but immediately after that visit, heated debate began over the price of peace. <laughs> In the center of the plenary hall is the government table, with the seat of the Prime Minister at its head. Often, it's the loneliest seat in the Knesset. On their shoulders, Prime Ministers carry all the affairs of state in routine times and times of emergency. The Knesset watches over the Prime Minister's work, expressing confidence in the government or voting to bring it down. 
The Knesset approves peace agreements signed by prime ministers and hears their decisions to go to war. These pictures were taken after the Yom Kippur War. It is here in the Knesset that the commendations were awarded. Many of the commendations went to those who fell in battle, accepted in their names by their relatives. The ceremony was held here in the Chagall Hall, the State Hall. It hosts numerous ceremonies, receptions, and special occasions. The hall is named after Jewish artist Mark Chagall, who created its tapestries and mosaics. Many works of art are displayed in the Knesset building, along with a facsimile of the Proclamation of Independence, declaring the establishment of the State of Israel. Once every seven years, the Knesset elects the president of the state. Voting is by secret ballot. But most Knesset votes are open, and every citizen knows how each and every member of Knesset voted. Voting methods have evolved over the years from a show of hands to electronic polling, but the basic principle remains the same. The majority rules. At the end of each national election campaign, a new Knesset is sworn in. Its members elect the Knesset speaker, who chairs the meetings of the plenum and represents the Knesset before the people of Israel and the world. Much of the Knesset's work takes place outside the plenum, especially in its committee rooms. Detailed deliberations touch on all aspects of our lives, social matters, economics, foreign affairs, and security. The committees prepare bills for voting in the plenum. Ministers, experts, and officials are invited to the meetings to report and answer questions posed by members of the committee. In 1976, Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin came to the Foreign Affairs and Security Committee to report on an Air France flight that had been hijacked to Entebbe. Several days later, an amazing rescue operation freed the hostages, most of them Israelis and Jews. Most Knesset activities are carried out with full public scrutiny. The Knesset television channel broadcasts its debates live. The Knesset website enables citizens to keep track of deliberations in the committees and even to participate in some of them. But it's not only Knesset members who are active here. Every day, thousands of people visit the Knesset, public representatives, lobbyists, politicians, and citizens, all trying to influence the way Knesset members vote. Others come here to take part in demonstrations. As the bastion of Israel's democracy, the Knesset is where national issues are decided. It's a natural magnet for individuals and groups raising their voices in protest. And there are other moments when masses of citizens come to the Knesset to express identification, respect, grief. So it was in the difficult days following the assassination of Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin. Hundreds of thousands came to the Knesset courtyard to pass by his coffin. It was from the Knesset that his funeral procession set out. Since it was built, this building has always been the central arena of public activity in Israel. Great personalities from around the world have visited here. All of Israel's leaders have been active here. During the next hour, you'll pass through the Knesset's halls, along walls that, if they could speak, would tell tales of the most dramatic moments in Israel's history. Think about where you are in our one and only parliament, a place that influences so many aspects of our lives. <laughs> 